Hi everyone, this is Tuplex. Welcome back. I've made a change to the nuclear fuel train system. Um, previously I had the loading station here and then I had it so that seven trains could stack up behind the station. They would come in, they would load fuel and unload spent fuel. And then they would proceed to one of six stations when they were needed. Um, the problem I noticed though, not really a big problem, but something that I didn't like, is that when trains would come in with spent fuel, they would be here in the back, and I know that it might take a long time before they got up here to where they could unload the spent fuel cells. And I didn't like that, so I tried putting inserters back here to unload the trains while they were waiting. But when a train is not stopped at a station, you can't unload it. Um, you can only load or unload a train when it's actually stopped at a station. That's when the cargo wagons um, become available to take things out or put things in. <clears throat> so I decided to change it so that uh, the trains will come um, you know, one at a time to this station to load and unload. And then they'll go over here to a depot that I created. So I made a depot called Q. I guess I should call it, well, I'm not going to mess with it. I probably should have called it depot instead of Q. But in any case, the seven trains come here and then they're going to wait for, um, for train supply manager to dispatch them. Um, and then when I started looking at this nuclear array, I said, well, I don't really see why I need six trains, <laughs> you know, one train for each set of eight reactors. That seemed a little bit excessive. So I removed some so that I had one on each side. And then I started thinking, well, maybe I don't even really need one on each side. Uh, so what I did is I put, I put two roboports here in the middle so that we could join this robo network and this one. So these are all on the same robot network now. I had to use two because if I put a robo port right here in the center, it was just a little bit too far away from either side. Uh, so I just added two in the center and those link up the, the robot networks on both sides. And then I can just bring in a single train. Now, because I'm using logistic or I'm sorry, uh, TSM, for this, I'm going to have to give each of these stations a unique name. Um, and I don't turn the stations on and off anymore because TSM takes care of that. So I can leave the station on all the time. And then I'll just, you know, each, each grid of nuclear reactors, I'll just call A, B, C, D, and so on. And I'll name the station accordingly. Because with TSM, you have to have a unique name for each unloading station or for each requester station. Okay, so then uh, what I did there is, you know, I have the circuit wired up as usual. Uh, the RoboPort is reading logistic network contents. I'm going to take some of the bots out of here. I think I'm going to be fine with only 50. Um, so this will read... This will read how much um, fuel cells we have in storage. So you can see that the input signal there is 262. Uh, it also happens to be reading the contents of my trash slots for whatever reason. Um, but I've got 192 of those. And then with a requester chest, Requester chests, contents of requester chests are not read by the logistic network. So for that one, that one has to be hardwired. So that's why I have the wire come here and then over here. So then I have two decider combinators. So one says that if we have fewer than 100 fuel cells, we're going to output a P. And this one says that if we have more than 100 spent fuel cells, it'll also output a P. So if either of those conditions are met, either we have 100 or more spent cells or less than 100 
uh, fresh fuel cells, it'll request another train to come here. So this is almost ready. One more and one more spent fuel cell and it'll call a train. So maybe we can just wait here a moment for that to take place. I'm not sure how long we'll have to wait. There we go. Okay. And then you can see the light kind of quickly turn on. And then one of the trains leaves from the depot. And it will be here in just a moment. Here it comes. Okay, the chest is limited to 200. All right, and then that train will go back. It'll refill, it'll unload the spent cells, and then it'll go back into the queue. Okay, and then we can see the, the reprocessing take place. We haven't seen that before. And then that'll turn all that back into uranium-238. that. Now all my uranium processing is turned off right now because my chests are nearly full. Um, and the Covarex is turned off because we have we have less than a 13 to 1 ratio of 235 to 238. Right? So we're not going to make any more 235 until we accumulate more 238 to make that necessary to keep cranking out the fuel cells. All right, so that's it. <clears throat> so I feel pretty comfortable with that now. Um, and again, we we separated the electrical network on the new part of the of the base with this switch that we installed a little while ago. And actually, I can put a I can put a marker on the mini map, can I? Um, there we go. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with this. I don't think I'm going to have to do anything else with it for the rest of the game. And now, what I would like to do, uh, since the next step for us is going to be to keep building up the base... I'd like to spend some time setting up my supply train or my engineering train to have more of the items that I'm using the most. So that's what we're going to work on today. Okay. Um, so the first thing is I think I need... No, let's unload this. Uh, okay, let's see. I'm going to change the ratio of speed modules to productivity modules in my train because I think we generally need a lot more speed than productivity. All right, so let's do that first. And then I'll I'll unload these and put these in the chests.
Okay, and I currently have 17,000 speed modules and almost 10,000 productivity modules. <laughs> so we'll be in good shape for quite a while. All right, good. So that's first and foremost. And maybe, maybe we need to set up a second train car with modules too. We'll see. Okay, secondly, when it comes to rail, right, like I've got these two cars, I, I think I'd like to combine these. Okay, so I'm going to copy, let's see, let's copy that there, and let's copy those two there. And then we'll empty these. Okay. So we'll start filtering all these slots for rail. Now what do I have in here? I've got six, four, and two. Okay, so let's empty out that much. Okay, and we'll put two of the power poles. One, two, three, four, five, six regular signals, and four chain signals. Okay. Okay, so then we'll have all of our rail stuff in a single car, and then we can clear this one out. Okay, beacons. Let's have two trains full of beacons because one seems to never be enough. Okay, and then over here, let's um, let's empty one of these out. We'll pick that up. And so we'll use this for logistics stuff. And I think if we do, maybe we do like half undergrounds and half belts. That seems like a good ratio. Let's see, underground, 1,000. Okay, and then we can use this one for, let's say, inserters. Let's throw in some lights. Maybe some assembly machines. What about furnaces? Uh, how many furnaces are on this big bad boy? 352 furnaces. So let's do 400 furnaces. That's 400. Uh, what else should we put in there? Pipes. Uh, 
There. That looks good to me. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different items. Or let's do, we'll do like three on one side and four on the other one. Okay, so 500 stack inserters. Two hundred and fifty blue inserters. Two hundred and fifty lights. Why am I not getting blue inserters? Oh, we need to request from buffer chests. Okay. Uh, 250 assembly machines. Okay, and then 250 underground pipes. Two hundred regular pipes and um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four hundred furnaces. Okay, request from buffer. I'll just set request from buffer for all of these things. just in case. Okay. Uh, landfill. Do I really need to fill up with landfill? I don't know. Probably. I'll keep the landfill <clears throat> car, and then I'm going to keep this trash car. Um, trying to think of what else I might need. Let's take a look. Chests. Yeah. Uh, steel chests would be good. If I need to set up more than just a couple of stations, I'll have an, I'll have extra chests available. Okay. Inserters. I always I always carry around wire and combinators, and I don't use too many, so that's fine. I always have a couple stacks of splitters. I don't use too many of those. Okay. No, I think this will do. And this should allow me to build a lot of these things without having to go back to base to get more stuff. Okay. 
Perfect. So, <clears throat> oh, another thing, uh, the aura eraser. Like I mentioned last time, the aura eraser doesn't show up where it normally does. Um, somebody uh, left a helpful comment with a console command that would pull it up and allow you to create one and add it to your inventory. So I did that. Uh, let's see if I've got it buffered here. Yeah, this is the command. So it's slash C game dot player dot insert curly bracket name equals either or eraser or or erase in quotes. Now in my case it's or erase because the name of the mod that I'm using is actually called or erase, not or eraser. Um, because or eraser hasn't been updated since version 17 and somebody else kind of took over updating the mod but they had to give it a different name to put it on the mod hub. So the one I'm using is called Aura Race, um, but it's essentially the same mod that's been updated. Um, so I had to use that name to pull up the item. So I stuck that in my inventory. Um, another cool thing that I did is with the, with the personal trains mod that I'm using, uh, it has a feature where you can call your train um, so I added a shortcut key for that into my hotbar here. And for anyone who's not sure how to do that, you can modify what appears here. Um, if you click this little, this little button here in the upper right, it allows you to select the functions that you want there and reorder them. So what I did is, uh, but you can only have you can only have up to 12. So what I did is I just disabled the undo button since I, I usually don't use any of these anyway. And then I enabled the call your train and then just reordered it so that it was in the same place. That way everything else will still be in the same place as well. Okay. Um, and the way this works, uh, when you first use it, you, the mod asks you to click on one of the locomotives for your train. So I did that. So now, now the mod knows that this train with ID, what's the ID? It knows that train ID 401 is my personal train. So now wherever I am, I can click on this and it'll tell my personal train to go to that spot. And then I can jump in, go back home or go wherever. Um, I wish I would have discovered that feature a long time ago because it's it's pretty useful. So that way, wherever you are on the map, you can just click the button and your train will come and get you wherever you happen to be. Okay, so uh, we've got a little bit of time left. So maybe what we can do now is build my other iron smelter, uh, which is going to go in cell H2. So let's go set that up. And that'll be one more done. So H2 is going to be over here. So we will have to build a new grid section as well. Now a lot of this early building is going to be, <clears throat> it's going to consist of a lot of copy paste from my original grid. Um, since, since the design of the smelters, uh, is really not changing except for the loading and unloading. And since I've already built one, I'm essentially just going to be copying this blueprint. Um, so since, uh, you know, since the design work has been pretty much done, uh, there's not going to be a lot of heavy thinking involved, just a lot of building stuff for my blueprints.
So like I mentioned last week, I ordered a new monitor. I got um, the one that I ordered is an Asus. I forget the model number. Uh, it was one of the one of the Asus gaming monitors that has G-Sync. Um, my current monitor is a G-Sync monitor, uh, which I bought. I've had it probably two or three years now. And it's a great monitor. I, I really like G-Sync. Um, if you're not familiar with that, uh, AMD has a version of G-Sync too. They call it something different, obviously. I think they call it adaptive sync or something like that. <clears throat> but essentially what it does is it detects the frame rate of your game and it matches the frame rate of your monitor dynamically to match the FPS that you're getting in your game. So it makes it really smooth. You don't get like, you don't get screen tearing. Um, you just disable adaptive or you disable vertical, uh, what do they call that option? Uh, da, 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 da. There, well, wait for VSync. I think we need to disable wait for VSync since G-Sync handles it. Surprise I hadn't done that yet. And then, uh, and then G-Sync will just continually update the refresh rate of your monitor to match whatever you're getting in game. And it makes it look really smooth, especially as the frame rate changes, you know, when you get into heavy scenes or whatever, um, you don't really notice it. It's real, it's really nice. So anyway, I got the new one to have G-Sync support as well. Um, when I got my current monitor, G-Sync was still fairly new and, uh, the monitors were rather expensive. I, th I think I spent six or seven hundred dollars for this monitor. Um, and G-Sync monitors are still more expensive, uh, but it's gotten a lot more reasonable. So the new one I got was it was on sale for four hundred bucks or something, and it's got a super fast uh, update speed. One, two, three, four. I think it's like uh, half a millisecond or something. So should be pretty nice. Okay, so I'm going to put my two stackers in. Let's see, input stacker goes there. Is that there? I'm not sure. That must be on my stacker blueprint. Yeah, it is. Let me edit that out. Did I put this in the wrong place? I did. <laughs> That's why it didn't look right. better okay and then I have to remove that signal from that side and then there's a comparable signal on the other side that I have to get rid of right there okay and now I can just copy everything between those two stackers that. I need to zoom out again. For some reason when I'm zooming out, every once in a while a 2 appears on my screen. I'm not sure why. Uh, you know what I should have added to the train as well? Substations. Grab that. And 
let's grab this. I probably could have just, well, for sure I could have just copied the whole grid all at once, but I don't know. I just prefer doing it in pieces like this. And contrary to what um, to what many would like to believe, I don't always have a good reason for doing things the way that I do <laughs> when I play this game. I try to, but a lot of it just comes down to personal preference and capriciousness. Um, and that's one of the beautiful things about this game is that you can, there's lots of different ways that you can play it. Right, there's usually there's usually no wrong way to do it in Factorio. Um, now, sometimes there are optimal ways and suboptimal ways to do things, um, but you know, if your factory is producing the items that you want at the rate that you want, then you did it correctly. Hmm, and I'm still short on beacons. Well, there's more in the train. Okay, and then that one didn't get filtered. Let's grab the furnaces. And let's grab prod modules. And my super mega battery is still <laughs> barely, barely getting depleted at all, which is beautiful. Let's see, am I gonna have enough? Ooh, I think I'm just short. I'm just short on speed modules. That's a bummer. Okay, what else do I need? I need undergrounds, stack inserters, lights, and some chests. Okay, so undergrounds... Stack inserters. Whoops. Lights. And chests. Okay, and I think I'm gonna clear I'm gonna clear all the trees from inside the production grid here. I'll leave everything outside, but I don't I wanna be able to see what's going on here. So let's clear all those trees out. Alright, and then I just need to come back with some Oh, more stack inserters and more beacons. I think I'll clear these trees out as well. Okay. All right. So let's just get that last, those last few stack inserters that we need. And then we'll go pick up more beacons. Alright, 
So I'm going to put the wood into the trash train. Uh, those were for beacons. We'll put the modules back. We'll put that one extra beacon back. Okay, so I'll just send this to pick up modules. And while that goes to do that, we can rename our stations. Okay, so this is going to be B. This will also be B. And I'm gonna wait till I get my beacons before I before I attempt to uh, to fill the train. Okay, let's see how we're doing. Alright, still loading. request my train and it should be on its way here it comes Some pretty long distances to travel now. Okay, that should be enough. Okay, and we are done. Uh, now, this one, I should have another depot. So this is iron plate B. Uh, where are we putting radars? Actually not on this one. Top of that one. And then one, two, three, four, and then halfway up. Okay, I've got that one already, so I need to put another radar over here on this side. Alright, and then I'll put another one up there. Well, I can put one up here, I guess, on that side. And then I'll, I'll do the fourth radar when I build the next grid above me. Well, this is pretty much all set. Um, I've used up all the time that I want to use up today. Uh, what I'm going to do now is build another iron depot here. 
Uh, that's going to be A, B, C. That's going to be Depot D that I'll build down there. Right, A, B, C, and D. And then I'll set this to pull from this depot rather than the other one. All right, so I'll have that ready for the next time. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.